Hi Scouts. What I'd like to talk about tonight is a little bit about fuses. I have here on my desk a couple of examples of some of the more common fuses. This one right here in the front is one of the larger style blade fuses. You'll find these on most modern vehicles. This little one in the back here, this one here is a miniature blade fuse. You'll find these on more um, contemporary vehicles, uh, probably within the last decade or so. Go back a little further though, and this becomes the more popular one, this glass fuse with the two metal ends. What I'm gonna show you tonight is a way of testing fuses that doesn't require you to remove them from the car, and it also works to test them when they're out of the car. Typically speaking, when a fuse blows, what will happen is the little metal connector between the two sides of the fuse, see the little loop that's in there? That little connector will break. Usually when it breaks, it also puts a nice little black mark inside the housing and it's pretty obvious. But generally speaking, and if you look at this one right here, you can see the wire that, that goes between those. Okay, And on the glass fuse, you can see the wire right down the middle of the fuse there. All right. But typically when they break, you know it. However, they do break every once in a while, and it's not quite so obvious that the wire's broken. So what we're going to do is we're going to test it. I mentioned earlier in uh, a previous episode that I like using multimeters, and I've got a supply of different types of multimeters that I have. But what, the, what you want to look for in your multimeter is a symbol that looks like this here. Little diode symbol and it typically has some kind of a note or speaker next to it. You see that right there? On this one here, a little easier to see, there's the diode symbol, the triangle with the line, and this one here is the symbol for this, the tone. Um, even on this little cheap one here from Radio Shack, you still see the tone and the diode symbol. Almost every single meter sold today has that kind of a thing, and a couple of these are only $10, $15, so we're not talking expensive meters here. Even on the real expensive one over here, um, you can see that that's the tone symbol. And I can change it to the diode symbol as well. Okay? So that's the one you're going to look for. And what you do is you take the probes, and we're going to start here with the, with the metal one, the glass one, excuse me. You touch both ends, and even if it's in the vehicle, you just touch both ends wherever it is, and the meter tells you that it's got continuity. Okay? With one of the blade type, you touch the top ends of the terminals, and you can tell that those work as well. Notice it's all zeros. That means there's no resistance whatsoever. If you see numbers that are high, like 100 or 200 or something to that effect, it means you've got a partial break and not all the energy is going through. But if you're close to zero, it's a good fuse. And the tone tells you so. The tone's usually calibrated for things that have very little resistance. So that's just a simple way of testing fuses. And what I'd like you to do, if you have a meter, you don't have to run out and buy one, but if you have one, or your parents have one, or your neighbor has one, or wherever you can beg, borrow, or do not steal, that's against the scout rules, but beg and borrow is fine. Um, get a meter and try testing your fuses that way. That will be one of the um, requirements for this next section. If you don't have a means of testing the fuse, then I'd like you to simply write up a way that you would use a meter to test the fuse. Tell me what settings you'd want to be looking for in the meter, the diode symbol or the tone. Tell me what you'd look for in the display or listened for. And tell me how you would go about testing the blade type fuse and the glass type fuse. If you have any questions, of course, you can contact me at any time. Thank you.